Okay, this side or this side? I'm actually attempting full coverage today because one of my clients asked and it's easier than you think. There's just a couple techniques to it, but you can get full coverage with Saint, absolutely. So I'm excited for you to watch this and for you to practice and come back to me and tell me how well you like it. So stay tuned for Demi versus full coverage 3D. And I'm glad you're here. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle Spieler. I'm an over 25 year professional makeup artist. I've been with Saint now for two and a half years. I'm excited about this topic today. I also am a huge cheerleader of mature women. I saw a real hole in the education. I saw mature content creators doing things in a youthful way, but I didn't see tried and true professional mature techniques. So I invented or created Mature Makeup Masterclass. It's a series of 23 videos on mature technique, and I priced it low so that everyone can have access to it, okay? So today I want to do half of my face with Demi for that gal who likes a really, really pretty, natural, almost French approach to makeup, although this is not French at all because they won't spend time color correcting. And then on this side, I wanna do heavy makeup because I had a gal last night ask how she can make her Saint heavier. She wants heavier coverage. I'm not a fan of heavy coverage, but I respect those who are, and I want to show you today how to do it. But I thought it was important to use my back camera real quick because I think that we need to see what real texture looks like. So these are my texture areas. This is when, if I use any kind of liquid foundation, this is where it gets dry and cakey through here. You can see the texture around my eyes. Okay, you can see sunspots and freckles. Now remember this back camera hyper focuses on everything. So it's 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 high def, so it's seeing beyond what the naked eye can see, okay? I was just at a class for airbrush last week. I was the oldest there and younger people in the 20s and 30s were commenting on how gorgeous my skin was from across the room. And they weren't saying that to other people in the class. Well, one guy, he was an esthetician, his skin was divine. But my point is, is I have very good skin for 56. I take excellent care of it. I'm doing this series of professional peels at home to kind of pave the way to help you. I'm the guinea pig for me right now. I did the lower facelift, right? So I have good skin, but this is what good skin looks like. It has some orange peel. It has pores, okay? And I, I think so many people forget what real skin looks like or we hyper-focus on our pores and our texture and then we get down. We get down about ourselves because we're like, oh, this person on Instagram or this person on YouTube, they look like this. I even did a TikTok yesterday about just the recap of the Oscars, really primarily focusing on makeup because that's my business. And I did a zoomed in picture on Jennifer Lawrence, who's young, granted she's young, she's in her thirties, but you, but I zoomed in and you could see texture. Now, granted it was stunning texture, like her pores were there, but almost not. She didn't have like texture through here yet. She's only in her 30s. But I did that to show people that even women who have access to the top facial treatments and skincare in the world, we all still have texture, okay? I'm gonna turn this around and let's get started. All right, let's get started. Oh, I like this camera better. <laughs> I know you don't care, but I did promise to show my real skin close up. And it's not that this isn't my real skin. This is the front, front camera. I, I use absolutely no filters. I stopped I stopped filters years and years ago, but I stopped beauty mode on TikTok in the fall of 2021. So it's been a long time. I want people to see real skin. I want to normalize real skin. Okay, so I am going to do, oh, excuse me, Demi. I have Diet Dr. Pepper, so y'all y'all know what's gonna happen here. Okay, so I'm gonna use this little rock stick under my eyes. You don't have to, I'm not trying to promote this, 
but I have not done my skin prep in about an hour. And I think it's super important to have really fresh, hydrated under eyes when doing demi or any type of concealer because it helps blend it in and melt it in with the skin. What is this even called? I reach for this time and time again. Rock Multi Correction Revive and Glow Eye Balm with Vitamin C. It's like a little bullet. It leaves like the tiniest little peachy gold cast, but not really. You can see under my eyes. And it, but see that sheen it leaves? So to me, it's just really nice to put under an eye product. When you see all of the big makeup artists doing red carpet, they really like melt an eye cream under the eye and then put concealer almost immediately into it because they know it's going to be prettier that way. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to do, my nose is running because I just ate some <clears throat> hot egg bites. Okay, O3 works for me because it co it corrects blue and purple, okay? And here we have some blue and purple. So I'm gonna go where only where I have blue and purple and nowhere else. And I, I like the bright brush for this. Okay, so right there, I have some blue veins under my eye. By the way, this is gonna be my demi side. But I'm gonna do demi on both. And then I like to go right here because I have this weird little gray, purple gray, reddish, weird shadow. Okay? And then look at that. It still looks like skin. Now we haven't done the whole under eye. We just corrected the dark area. But this is what brought me to Saint. It was demi. I. I love color correction. I love color science and color theory. It really spoke to me as a professional artist. Okay, do you see that? Now look at that. Do you still see some purple? A little bit. It's not bad. I feel like my skincare is helping my under eye circles. I'm going to do an eye peel. I'm going to do a TCA 7% eye peel soon. And um, over time, eye peels are really supposed to help lighten dark circles under the eye, and I'm really excited for that, okay? I'm also gonna go in on this side and do it because even though this is gonna be our heavy, heavy coverage side, we're still gonna color correct. I'm really excited for you to see two different ways today. And if you're new here, welcome. I come from the Hollywood industry and I've done lots of mature makeup, not only on myself, but on other people. Okay, so even Steven, we're doing it completely even. Now I'm gonna take my NR1, right? NR1, neutral red one, and I call this the magic color because it somehow blends light areas and dark areas. I'm kind of lightly going over where I just put that peach, but not really. I'm kind of going in between those areas. And I just love how it just smooths everything out. It's very subtle. Again, we're not going for heavy coverage. but I love NR1 and most Caucasian women can wear it. I think if you start getting to like deeper than JLo, I don't know if it's gonna work. You know who we should ask is Marita. Marita is always faithfully in comments and she wears Saint. So we should ask Marita if she ever wears NR1 and what her highlight color is. Marita, will you tell us what your highlight color is and if NR1 works for you? And if not, do you use NO1, NY1? Just curious. A lot of you ask about this. It's a anti-wrinkle straw, but look. 
it it prevents you from like doing the oh you know and then getting but anyway my my it's glass and I think it helps but who knows okay now I'm going to also go in with the NR1 around my nose. I know usually you, you've seen me do the, yeah, I don't know that that's working too well. Maybe I need the YO one, we'll see. I feel like it worked a little better on that side. Let me get a different brush. See, that's more yellow. Let's take some YO one. It really, it's a peachy yellow. It's like a gold with a little tiny bit of orange in it. So it really cuts any red. <laughs> yeah, that worked better. Okay, just stick to what you know, Michelle. Sometimes I like that NR one, but today I feel like I'm maybe a little bit more red. Now, just so you know, I want you to know I am wearing Say Slip Tint on both my whole face. This is shade three, and I like it because <clears throat> I use this a lot. I, I do skin tints or BB creams when I wear Demi. I rarely will wear Demi with nothing. Now, the day that I was getting complimented at the airbrush class, I only had this on, which as you know, is just really an SPF. It's kind of cloudy. It's kind of a cloudy light beige. I wouldn't call it tinted, but it does kind of even you out in like a skin cheat type way. So I feel like this always makes my skin tone look even better than it really is. And then I can use Demi with this. And that's what I used that day when I was getting so many compliments. It's, it's because I had that beautiful light bounce from my skin. But today, I actually have both of these on, which is why if I'm looking a little, I'll be honest, I'm looking a little greasy. So I'm not suggesting you layer these, but um, I do like skin tints with Demi and I will sometimes use Say, I'll use Maybelline BB Cream, I'll use Pomifera BB Cream, I'll use Live Tinted, um, that new Revlon that I've been raving about, the skin tint. So you get the picture. I like skin tints a lot, especially as we start getting into the warm uh, summer months. I really love a skin tint, okay? Now, on this side, um, I'm gonna do a little bronzer, but for heavy coverage, we're gonna do things differently. We're gonna do things differently. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I think I'm gonna do my detail brush for bronzer. Okay. For my heavy coverage, we can't do it like all the young girls do it, okay? They do one layer on their whole face, which is why you see them do the polka dots and all of that. They're doing one layer. So the contour is in one layer, the bronzer's in a different area, the foundation's in a different area. And when they blend it all in, they're creating one layer. We can't do that for mature skin if we want heavy coverage, we can't. So we have to ignore that technique, which works great on the younger women and we're gonna have to do something a little bit differently for us, okay? For he for heavy coverage, that is. So I do like um, a little bronzer, and the reason I'm putting this on with some blush first is I don't wanna put Demi on sunspots and then put this on and then have it rub off the sunspot coverage. So I like to do a little bronzer which um, is half my face. It's gonna look weird, but you, you're gonna get the gist. I'm taking one for the team. I'm showing you how to do two different ways, but I do like a little bit of bronzer, even when I am doing just Demi, because remember, I grew up in Southern California and myself, my mom, pretty much everyone I knew, we wore bronzer every day. We wore bronzer. We were big bronzer fans in Southern California in the 80s and 90s. And yes, Indian Earth was my most used bronzer. 
Okay. Now, let me, I need to, here we go. I'm sorry. I have my makeup in so many different palettes. It's ridiculous. Okay. When you do Demi's blush, you really need the shape brush. The shape brush is a little bit looser. It's not so dense. It's not as dense as like this, which that looks so tweaked. Um, but the, the bronzer blush brush, <laughs> look at how tweaked these are. I need to get them into a bigger container is my problem. I've been cramming them into one of these, which is on a Lazy Susan, so it wheels around, but I'm gonna tell you, it's too full. Okay, so I'm gonna take my R5, because to me, this is about the cutest blush in the world. I really mean that, I absolutely love it. And we're gonna give that a second to kind of calm down because we just went, right? We just patted, so it's gonna take a minute. Um, and then we can always like blend some of the bronzer with it. Okay, remember when I'm going for a demi look and when you're going for a demi look, we don't mind that a little bit of skin is peeking through. It's just part of what we love about demi is it's very skin-like. When we meet people in person, we have that beautiful light bounce off of our face and it's just very, very beautiful. Um, so we're not going for perfection here. Now I am gonna take a little bit of Oh, one with this, also the shape brush, the fluffy side of the shape brush. And I'm gonna kinda go right under here, just a little bit. I'm not picking up much at all, but just to kinda create a slightly lighter jawline and smooth out any edges. And I can sometimes go on the tip of the nose with it. Sometimes I can take it around the eyebrow. It just kind of lightly evens you out, but you're just hardly putting any on, and that's 01. 01's a lighter version of 03. Okay? And then I can go in with 01 and kind of go around the edges of that R5. And now I have a really beautiful pink blush. Love it. Okay, now I'm going to look in the mirror and really the only, I see some blue veins, which I'm gonna, well, maybe I'll hit a couple blue veins, but um, I see this sunspot right here. And I don't think I need 03 anymore. I think I've like, I've lightened it so much with peels. I think I can step down to 01. And then watch what I'm gonna do. We're not blocking it in. We're pixelating because that's what our skin is. It's little, millions of little pixel colors because no one's skin is one shade. We're, we're not a piece of paper. We have lots and lots of colors in our face. So I'm using that 01. If you have pinker skin, you might use a different color. This is why it's so important to get a free color match from me because I really, identify the different colors of your face and I break down what to use where. Okay, so now I don't see it anymore. And that is fantastic. And then I can go up here into a couple little blue veins that I'm really noticing. And sometimes I back, bounce back and forth between 01 and 03 um, because these are pretty blue. I do like to hit it with a little of the 03. And we're not drawing a line along the vein. We're just kind of wherever we're seeing the most blue, like even under the eye, I didn't do the whole vein, but wherever I see the most blue, I'll take a little bit of that 03, okay? I'll do lips at the end, but here is my demi face. And it just feels very soft and pretty. And I have nothing on my eyelid. Should we do something fun on the eyelid? I don't know. We'll figure that out in a minute. Now I am going to powder this. I'm going to powder this because it's going to make a big difference. Women will say to me, what do I do for pores? You powder. 
powder blurs pores. The minute you powder, those pores just kind of disappear. And if you find that you're not getting disappearing pores with the Saint powder, you can definitely go get the um, It Bye Bye Pores. I promise you, your pores will disappear with this. I've been using this in my pro kit since 2015. And when I do it on mature women or even men, they're like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, I know. Literally blurs and erases pores. I like the pressed for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but I do. I like the pressed. Okay, there we go. What do we think? I feel very pretty close up. Might need a pinch more blush right here. Okay, love it. Okay, we're gonna go into heavy coverage. We're gonna go in. I want you to think of your face as a wall. And when you are painting, I need to repaint this room in fact, when you're painting, you do one coat at a time and then you evaluate if it needs another coat or maybe there's just certain areas that need another coat. You don't go in and put three wet layers at one time. Same with makeup, okay? So I am going to use my 3D brush and I'm gonna use this side because I think it's gonna put it on heavier. And I'm gonna go in with Sandy, which has been my new color since I deepened my hair color. And I'm going to pat it in. See how I'm, I'm picking it up? I'm patting it in. The reason we're not doing bronzer and contour first like all the younger girls is because if you have a light layer of contour or bronzer here or here, but then you have heavier coverage foundation all around it, that's gonna look odd. It has to all blend, okay? But the whole point of the 3D face is to wear only one layer and it's not heavy coverage. So if you want to saint to be heavy coverage, you're just gonna have to put it on a little heavier, okay? I gotta say, it's looking pretty darn good. It's looking pretty darn good. So see, I'm really like stamping it into the face. You can see the yellow because the sandy is a little bit deeper than my skin tone, but remember we go deeper, mature girls, we go deeper. If we go too light, you're gonna see pores, texture, facial hair. I just shaved on Saturday. I wanna tell you too, quite a few of you have asked about my shave routine or how to shave a face. I have put that on my Facebook business page. It's Mature Makeup Masterclass, and I did it on Saturday. And it's a full video on how to shave your face. And I did one side with the Derma Flash, which is pretty expensive, but I absolutely loved it. I've used it for years. And I did the other half with this Hollywood browser. So you'll have to go and see which is the winner, okay? But I show you exactly how to shave the face. Okay, so most people just need coverage through here. Now, if you still have a lot of unevenness on the jawline, that's when I'm gonna go in with a lighter color and I'm gonna take Candlelit. And I'm gonna put that on pretty thick. Still looks okay with my jawline, okay? Now, here's what I'm gonna do. You can either take your stands, stands out sponge, and remember, if you, you bought this, you only wet it the first three times, and then it becomes this really soft memory foam, but it's a little stiff the first three times. So you wet it, you dampen it the first three times. I, you know, really wring it out and press all the water out in a 
paper towel. Um, and then you can go in and it just kind of presses it into the face. I know I haven't used this much in videos in a long time because I've really been using my hands a lot, but I really think that for heavy coverage, we really need a sponge. Now we sell a sponge with Saint. It's the Perfector. It looks just like the Beauty Blender. And people ask me, why don't you ever use that? I, I found this and it just was to me a, a life-changing sponge. There's nothing like it. I like the Saint Perfector sponge. I like a Beauty Blender, but I like this better. And so that's why. I'm not 100% Saint. I love Saint. It's my number one makeup, but I'm not 100% Saint. I never will be. If I was working for Chanel, I would not be 100% Chanel. I just wouldn't. No one's no makeup artist is 100% one line. Okay. So, I need to really look at this in a magnification. First of all, it's important to have a real mirror so you can see how it looks. But do you see the difference? You can see some skin texture showing through. It's a little bit more blotchy, but I don't care because I like to look good close up. But then look at this. Looks damn good. <laughs> it looks good. Okay. Now, I think at the end too, I'm going to show you how it looks on the back camera so you can see. There is some texture, but not like with heavy full coverage liquid makeup. This looks so good. Dang it. <sighs> Saint's just my favorite. It's just my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna take the setting spray by my friend Melanie Mills. She won the Emmy for Dancing with the Stars, if that tells you anything. Might as well do this side too. Ooh, it's the softest mist I've ever felt of any setting spray. It's an aerosol. She calls it super light, long lasting, and she won awards for this. I mean, she won an, an Emmy for Dancing with the Stars because she had to do that heavy, beautiful makeup with lots of glitter and contour and tan, but then also keep it on while these dancers danced and sweat and she also invented a beautiful body makeup, which I'll show you soon. Maybe I'll do it in a Monday review. You can put it on the body or the face. Do I have it over here? Here it is. She has three colors for lighter skin and she has three colors for deeper skin. And I'll show you maybe in a Monday review. And then you lock it in with this. And I have a code. She gives she gives anyone who shops through me um, a 15% code. But this is $40, but it is 3.5 ounces. That's a lot. Where's my normal? This is my, you know, I've used Cali Ray for about a year now. Okay, they're about the same. I think this is 3.3. What did I say this was? 3.6. Um, and I cannot remember the price on Cali Ray, but Cali Ray is considered clean beauty. It's surf proof. It's considered clean beauty. Also a fine mist, but you pump it. This is a fine mist aerosol. It dries real quickly and it's 40, but you get 15% off. And um, this is not considered clean beauty. <laughs> But when you need long wearing, like I'll, I would use this a hundred times over for a special event and I will be putting it in my pro kit because it's, it's that good. Okay. Now I didn't put powder on yet. Cause we're not going to put powder on yet. Okay. Right. This looks really good. Now, of course it's showing some more texture through here, but again, if you want like a more full, you're, if you want full coverage, you're used to texture. There's no such thing as full co full full coverage and skin like. Okay, those two things don't exist. Full coverage means makeup sitting on top of your skin, and people are gonna see it. You're gonna see it. But when you pull back, look at that. That's gorgeous. That's beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna go in. Now that I'm dry, I'm gonna go in. 
and I'm gonna do another layer because you wanna see it. I still see some freckles through here. I still see, I still see some veins. So I'm gonna go in with my candle lit because it's my lighter color. Remember I always say go lighter in the temples because it makes you look fuller. You're not as sunken in, you look fuller. I definitely like a lighter color on my jawline. And I'm gonna try my best to avoid my parentheses. I don't really need full coverage on my upper lip, but we could put a little bit. Okay. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a lighter color through the middle. Now, I don't think I'm gonna go any heavier than the second layer but you could still build up more if you wanted. I mean, look at that. That looks great. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my Sandy. And I'm gonna keep it more where I have noticeable pores and texture. Darker where we have pores and texture. I'm going to take it right through here, blend it in right down here, blend that to the candle lit. Now remember, I'm not going under the eyes right now. I have Demi, but you're going to wait and see what I'm going to do and you might be shocked. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful, it's radiant, it's so pretty. And then I'm gonna take my Stands Out sponge. And I feel like it just kind of helps press it into the face. You could even use your fingers because the fingers are gonna blend it in without lifting any product off. And you might prefer that. If you like heavy coverage, you might need to kind of, you know, pat it in and keep it on the face and not lift product off. Okay. So let me look and see in my magnification mirror, but look at that. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay. Again, I can see the texture right through here, but it's nowhere near the texture I get with liquid makeup. Any liquid, I don't care if it's Chanel or Milani, it's all gonna dry down because it's water-based. In fact, the, the airbrush class I just took, they got rid, rid of all their water-based um, airbrush foundation because it dries down and it's not pretty and they're sticking with just silicone and that's because silicone is beautiful on the skin and it's long wearing. Now we don't put silicone in Saint products, we don't need to, it's so pretty but silicone is longer wearing makeup and that's why you see it in so much makeup. Some women can wear a silicone primer under Saint, especially if you're mature and dry. If you are normal to oily or combo, probably you can't wear a silicone under Saint because it's all gonna get too slippy slidey, okay? Okay, so now that I have this heavier texture, heavier coverage. What do you think? What do you prefer? See here you can still see a little bit of a little bit of blotchiness, a little unevenness here. Not too bad though. As I pull back, that's that's very pretty, but that ooh, that is special occasion makeup right there. But some of you like a special occasion makeup every single day of your life. Okay, I'm gonna pause, I'll be right back. Okay, I do that because um, it's easier to download my videos when I break them up into 20 minutes or less. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with Bella. And Bella is going in areas that don't have real texture. So if we're, if we're adding another layer, it's okay. I'm not adding age to the top of my forehead. Top of my forehead's pretty smooth. 
the middle of my forehead, I get wrinkles, but that's because I have a lot of expression. And I don't Botox this whole part of my forehead because it forces my eyebrows down and then I look mad and then I get real hooded eyes. So some of you have to be real careful with Botox. Um, okay, and now I'm also gonna go, and I really am preferring Brontour these days. I think on mature skin, Brontour is very pretty. That way we're not adding a whole layer of contour and a layer of bronzer. It's like almost too much for mature skin. So I really like Brontour. And if you are cool, like let's say you're a summer or a winter and you're light or fair skin, get Ash. Ash is a beautiful contour and even last, um, fall and winter as it was getting colder, I would wear ash a lot of days as my bronzer. Um, it was almost like a cool rosy bronzer, but it's in the contour category. So it's called ash. It's very, very pretty as a bronzer. Um, it's not good on spring and summer. I mean, uh, spring and fall. And now that I know I'm a warm spring and I warmed up my complexion for golder and I went golder with my hair, I can't wear ash anymore, but you can if you have cool, cooler skin tone. Um, and then what would be a one for deeper? If you are deeper, you can do indigo. I've seen a lot of women use indigo. It looks dark, it looks scary, but you're just gonna put it on like this, right? You're just gonna put it on just like this. I'm gonna put a little bit on my nose. I like a little. I like bronzer on my nose, that's just me. You don't have to. A little bit in the outer eyes. Now, usually for jawline, I would like something cooler. So I might go in with shadow or olive or, um, I used to say Astoria, but Astoria is, I don't know, Astoria can get real dry and hard to pick up, but I do like a cooler contour under the jawline, but you know what? Probably in person, a bronzer or even the ash color or indigo is probably gonna look prettier, okay? So do you see that? What do we think? I think it looks great. Okay, I'm gonna do something that's gonna shock you. Are you ready? I'm going to take this side of the detail brush. I'm gonna go in with a little candle lit. You're not gonna believe this. You're not gonna believe it. And it's going to be my concealer because I already color corrected with Demi. Do you see how I'm just lightly patting it? And it's gonna create, look at the difference in that. Well, it's, it's pretty good. That's pretty good still. But if you're doing full coverage and you only have Demi under the eye, it's it's not gonna match up. It's, it's gonna look too sheer and you do wanna match that full coverage. So that's why I'm taking this little bit of candle it and I'm pressing it into the under eye and it looks darn good. I've never done that in two and a half years. You just saw it here. I've never put a highlight under the eye, but it needs the Demi. You have to have the Demi if you're gonna layer. And again, this is more for women who want heavy coverage or a special occasion makeup. I would never recommend layering 3D over Demi for on the daily. I, I prefer this because this looks just really good close up, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go in with some of our R5 because we wanna make it even Steven so that we can all decide what we think at the end. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the R5 And just so you know, I kind of treat, I, I kind of pretend like I have a little egg shape on my cheek. So 
the bottom of the, the fat bottom part of the egg would be here and then the top narrow part of the egg would be here. And I always kind of envision like a little egg shape on my face and that's how I do it. So it takes it back to about the eyebrow and then we're in the apple, but not so like, here's my real apple down here. See that? So I don't take it all the way to the bottom of the apple because then it can really, it can truly drag the face down. That That's true. But because I have an apple, it's so weird if I don't put color in my apple. It's just weird. Now, if you like to wear your blush high and on the outside, you wear it however you want. I feel like I look like a golden girl when I do that. Nothing, no shade to the golden girls. It's one of my favorite shows. But I feel like high and on the outside looks really outdated and very aging. And it, not, there is not a celebrity makeup artist in Hollywood that does high on the outside unless they're going for a specific look on a younger person. It's called draping. You won't see that on actresses over 45 or 50. Celebrity makeup artists keep it right here because that's where we blush naturally and it's the most flattering, okay? That's just a little tip from me to you. So we have the same blush on both sides. We have full coverage, we have sheer coverage, and we have a little bit of bronzer. If you wanna go heavier with contour, you can still keep going in and building it up. If you ever get to the point where you're like, ooh, that's a little too much contour, just take your brush that has the original um, foundation on it and just blend into it. Don't rub it. Contour does not rub well. It really requires a little bit of a pouncing motion. You don't wanna rub it, cause then you can rub it off and then you'll start getting blotchy and we don't want that. Um, so that looks really good to me. I'm gonna take these out real quick. Now we're gonna do lips in a minute. Of course we're gonna do some lips. Of course we're gonna do some lips. Um, I think we could even maybe do a little more bronzer. I think it's gonna require the bigger guy though. This is why this is why I love the big brush for blonze, bronzer, because look what we're gonna do. I feel like the bronzer, because it's such a big brush, almost like airbrushes it onto the forehead. Whereas that detail brush was a little bit more concentrated up at the top. And this is kind of, but these are little details you could do at the end where you just kind of reassess. And then if you ever feel like, oh, that's a little more bronzer than I need, you can just kind of tap it like that, okay? That looks great. I like bronzer on the nose, you don't have to. You do not have to. And then you could do a little bit of bronzer out here. And again, see how big it is? So it's almost like airbrushing it onto the face and into the hairline. I really love this brush. It seems so big and cumbersome, but it's such a great brush. Okay. Now with heavier makeup, I would do more on the eyes, but I'm loving this. Okay. So I'm gonna use a lip liner real quick. I never use the shade lip liner from Saint, cause I like a pencil, it's just a preference. If you love the Saint suede liner, go for it. But Sorry, I'm so quiet. Am I covering it? I do that all the time. I get so into lining my lips and mascara are probably the things I get so into I lose complete track that I'm even filming myself. Okay, that's MAC Strip Down. That's been one of my favorite liners since the 90s. It's great. And then I'm gonna put a little, I think Tropicana. 
Yeah, cute. You know, I don't always love Saint Cheek on the lips. You really have to go with a pigmented color. If you go too light, it's gonna look like you put concealer on your lips. That's Tropicana and I think that's really pretty. Okay, we're gonna spray this side again. Ooh, that coats the face real, really well. And it dries almost instantly, whereas my Cali Ray stays wet for quite a while. Yeah, this is dry already. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I wanted to do a little eyeshadow, so I did some Peppa on the eyelids. And then I'm going with Dream. This is our shade of the month. I did a whole video on it last week. It's in my eyebrows, and it's in my crease, and it's under my eyes. And I felt like with the heavier coverage, this really needed more eyeshadow, okay? But can you see the difference? It's funny because even, even the Demi blush looks more smooth and airbrushed than this side. Um, do I, am I in love with heavy coverage? <laughs> I'm pretty crazy about how this looks. And I don't have, even though we did a whole other layer, I don't look any heavier right through here, but you can always just take your finger and, you know, pat it out. If you ever get like makeup collecting in the crease, you just take a ring finger, a warm ring finger. Let me get Peppa off of it. And you just pat it out. It takes two seconds. Women get so upset when something creases on them, just pat it back out. I don't know what else to tell you. Our, our face moves, we're warm, product moves, product warms up and moves around. There's no getting around that. Um, so, you know, unless you do, but look, I'm, I'm creasing more right here than I am here. I have a little makeup. I have a little makeup in the crease right there. Gosh, it's that interesting. Okay, so which side do you like better? Do you like this because it's more airbrushed or this because it's more practical for every day? But see, look, I look a little bit more blotchy and imperfect where this side looks freaking phenomenal. Let's see how it looks on the back camera. Okay, I need you guys to do me a favor. During our artist birthday sale in January, we came up with this beautiful lipstick and it's called, um, it does not even have a label. It's the Saint Glitter Balm. And I ordered two and it has this beautiful glitter all around it, but once you use it on the lips, it doesn't. But it's this really pretty, sheer, warm, it's almost like an apricot gold, really sheer lip balm. And I'm asked about it every day on TikTok, on Instagram, here. I'm at, I wear this every day. I change the liners, but I wear this every day. It is my favorite lip balm. I'm more of a lip balm person than a lipstick. If you are interested in this, we sold out. Can you go on the Saint website and just click on contact us and say, please make the glitter lip balm permanent. Please make it available for everyone because it's so pretty. It's so pretty and I'm asked about it all the time, especially on TikTok. And I can't tell people what it is because one, I don't really talk about Saint on TikTok, um, but also it's, it's sold out. It was limited edition just for the party, but it's so beautiful. And I would love to see Saint come out with more lip balms in different colors and they might we'll see when we have our big conference in September okay so here's my full coverage side I want you to see any texture I look really really yellow I'm looking in the camera Woo! I look really yellow I don't look yellow at all in person it looks just beautiful in person okay and then here's the regular demi side with just skin tint okay I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at this. This is beautiful. And that was two layers. So for me, 
the two layers were perfect, you might want to go in with a third layer. You know, just put it on, blend it, setting spray. Reevaluate. Where do I need more coverage? Put it on, blend it, setting spray. And work in layers just like you're painting a wall in your house, okay? Listen, I get some of my best ideas from you, and I'm so, so thankful that you guys are all here. And um, I just, I love our community so much. I think you know that. I just absolutely love you. God loves you. And I want to end with a blessing. This was the favorite, favorite blessing I looked forward to every week when, um, I don't know if anyone saw the movie Jesus Revolution, but Pastor Chuck Smith was the pastor of Calvary Chapel. Kelsey Grammer played him in the movie Jesus Revolution. And he was my pastor in the late 80s through the mid 90s and then I went to a different Calvary Chapel. But he ended every Bible study and every church service with a blessing. And so I thought, what a great way to end the video with this blessing because I want every single one of you to be so blessed and feel God's love, feel his blessing, okay? I'll tell you, I'll write down to where it comes from in scripture. But All right, I had to turn the camera around, okay. Are you ready for your blessing? Now listen, I'm not a singer, but I've only memorized this since the 80s by singing it. When I try to speak it, I forget it. It's so, isn't music amazing? So I'm gonna give you your blessing in song. Please don't judge me on my voice, okay? The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and bring thee peace. Love you. See you Saturday.